Greetings and welcome back. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in part four of our awesome inventory system, we are going to get scrolling up and running. So, let's get started on that. First thing I'm going to do is uncomment all of this because we want to have a full inventory that we can scroll through. Then we're going to jump into the object inventory GUI. And inside of here, we're actually going to be using a variable that we've already made called scrolled amount right here. And we're going to be putting that inside of our draw event in certain locations. So the places that it needs to go are at the places where we are getting information from our grid, which is our DS grid get. And we're going to put a plus scrolled amount wherever that is happening. So there on the second line and on the third. Our scrolled amount value is going to make it so that the items that are being displayed are in line with how far down we've gone through our inventory and far up once we come back up. Now our rectangle that we are drawing needs to be changed just a little bit. Inside of these item selected ones, what we need to do is actually put a parentheses around them and then we are going to subtract scrolled amount. Here we need to subtract it because we want our rectangle to always be on the bottom of our inventory instead of going below. So if we subtract how much we've scrolled down, it'll always be on the bottom instead of disappearing. And it's minus scrolled amount. Now, we've done that, but we haven't actually changed our scrolled amount at all. So what we need to do is open up our scroll functions. If you middle click on a uh, script that you've created inside of your window here, it'll actually open it up right over here, which is kind of cool. So on our scrolled down, what we need to do now is update our scrolled amount based on certain values because you, you don't just update it anytime. It needs to be specifically when you are going below what is uh, there and what is displayed. So to do that, we're going to do an if statement. We're gonna say if item selected is greater than or equal to inventory end at. And if this is true, we're going to do plus plus scroll the mount and plus plus inventory on screen. Now, what we need to check, oh, I keep doing that. The last thing down here we need to check is a special case if we are attempting to go beyond the grid size, we need to put if scroll the mount because this is going to be added to i. So if scroll the mount plus inventory on screen is greater than ds grid height of my items. This time we're not going to subtract one because we want it to only be greater than it. We're going to decrement our scrolled amount. And that way we can't go beyond our grid and end up with an error. Now what we also need to do is take this variable inventory on screen and actually do something with it. Right now we haven't done anything with it. It is just a value that we have. So what we are going to do is actually inside of our draw event, right underneath here, we are going to say inventory on screen is equal to i. This way we can know exactly what i is all the time and we can be checking where we are and making sure that we're not going beyond where we should be. Now on our scroll up, we're going to do basically the same thing but in reverse. So here, all we need to check is if item selected, if the item we've chosen is less than scrolled amount. Oof, I cannot type. We're gonna decrement our scrolled amount. And with that, I'm actually going to build this and we should see an inventory system that we can go down and we can scroll through. We can go all the way to the bottom, we can go up, and when we come up, the it starts scrolling at the very top. And that is uh, how I liked it and how I thought it should look. That's a pure design decision. If you want, you can change the uh, if statements on the scrolling up to begin scrolling up at a different point if you want, but this is just the way I did it. So this is our full inventory and now it is scrollable. 
you can view everything, which is awesome. So this is this is huge. This actually took me a very long time. So I hope you guys appreciate this and that you can use it in your games. So with that, we now have a scrollable inventory, but we can't use it. We can't do anything with this yet. So what we're going to do is actually make it now usable. So we're going to create a OBJ button. And this button is going to use this SPR button sprite. And this sprite actually has uh, two sub images. So we're going to use those so that when we hover over it, it changes just for a little bit of a nice effect. So inside of here, what we're going to do is add a create event. And we're going to set image speed equal to zero since it has more than one sub image. And we're going to give it a variable that we are going to define when we create our sprite button. This is going to be something that we create and then we give it information. Now the reason that this is an actual object instead of just a sprite like our sprite item box that we drew on screen is that we want to be able to click on it. Now if we want to click on something that isn't an object, it's far more difficult because we have to be precise on where our mouse is at and tracking your mouse location based on a sprite you're drawing from code is possible. It's just a lot of work and it's a lot more difficult to get precise. So if we create an item, we can do much easier, much simpler things such as a mouse event like mouse enter where we say image index equal one and a mouse event where it's mouse leave and we say image index equals zero. That way when we go onto it, we can tell that we are hovering over it and it just makes it a lot better. Okay, a lot easier. So draw, we're gonna add an event and inside of here, all we're gonna do is just draw ourself and draw the text that this object has been given. And it's gonna be drawn at X minus 20 and Y minus 10 to be right in the middle. And it's gonna be my text. Now, the text that we're going to give it is going to be use and either discard or trash or remove whatever kind of adjective you want to use to get rid of an item, you would give that to it. And then what we're going to do is a mouse left pressed. And when it is pressed, we're going to call a function that is trash item, which we haven't made yet, but we're going to set it up so that it is ready to go. So I'm going to say, if my text is equal to use. And this part's important because this button is gonna be used for both using and removing, so we need to have a check in here that says when we press on it, do something based on certain criteria, and that criteria is my text. So if it's used, what we're gonna do is actually use the script that the object that we have currently selected has. So we're gonna say if, Actually, we're going to say script execute ds grid get. And we're going to say player inventory, and four is where our description is where our script is being stored at. It's the very last thing in our inventory. So four, and then item selected. And remember that is a global variable from our obj inventory GUI. So we can access that, and that is on the item that we want. And then when we, oh, hold on, one more. Uh, so then when we use our script execute, that just says use the script that is inside of there, and we can store a script very easily, which is awesome, but you need to use this script execute function. Now, thinking about this, when we use an item, what we want to do is to uh, use it, but then we want to get rid of that item because it has been used. So right after this, we actually want to call trash item, which hasn't been made. So let's go ahead and create that script and we'll come through and we'll fill that in in just a minute. But that way it is right here. So we know it's being used. Okay. And then we're going to say else if my text is equal to trash. We're going to just call trash item, not tash item. That way it just gets rid of the item completely. All right. So with that, 
we need to go into OBJ Inventory GUI before we make that uh, script actually official and doing something. We're going to go to the Create Event because now we need to actually make those buttons and put them on screen so that they can be used. But to do that, I actually want to put them inside of an alarm. The reason for this is that I want to access certain variables about my OBJ Inventory GUI that aren't actually set yet. And mainly, that is the uh, X and Y location of our OBJ Inventory GUI. You may be thinking that it's already set because it appears in place, but if you remember, right here, when we create it, we actually make it at zero, zero. And yes, we change it, but it doesn't actually update the X and Y coordinates until the next frame. So it's going to come in here, it's going to create it, and it's going to set it, but it's not going to move it. So if we try to create our buttons based on where our sprite, where our object is, it's going to be incorrect. This is something that I found was very strange. I was trying to use B box left and it was coming up with negative 150, even though I had set it in the correct spot. And that was because it hadn't yet initialized and set the X and Y coordinates. So if we set alarm zero to one, it will then work because it has had time to update those events. Hopefully that makes sense. So inside of our alarm, we're actually going to create a couple of buttons. So use button is going to be instance create depth. Again, this is the difference between one Game Maker Studio one and two is instance create depth. So you just need to use regular instance create. And I'm going to say B box right plus 58. And again, these are values that I have played around with and it took me a while to figure out, but they work very well for what I'm doing with this specific sprite. Room height minus sprite, get y offset SPR item box, because we want it to be um, exactly where the item box is being located. And then we're going to increase that by 100. And we're going to say depth minus one, because we want it to be on top of it. And OBJ, uh, what do we call that? OBJ button. Okay. Now that will make it, and it's too large to fit on screen. And then what we want to do is assign my text to it. So use button dot my text equals use. Now we're going to do the same thing with trash button instance create depth and it's going to be pretty close but it's going to be b, b box right plus uh, 198 and then it's going to be room height minus sprite get y offset spr item box plus 100 and the same thing for depth minus one and obj button and then we're going to set its text trash button dot my text equals trash so that will create the two buttons. We'll actually run it right now and make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. Press I, our inventory shows up, and here they are. And when I bring my mouse over them, it changes color. It looks really nice. You can tell that you're about to do something with it. Now, if I click on it, it's gonna come up with an error because we haven't actually defined that script yet. So that's the next thing we're gonna do here. Now, trash item is actually a very big task. This would be a really good place to stop this video because it is going to be a lot of coding and a lot of logical processing. So let's take a break here and let's end it at part four. And on part five, we will hopefully finish this up and finish up the rest of the video. So thank you for joining me. If this was helpful, please like and share. Let me know what you thought. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the, in the comments down below. As always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. If you find the content on my channel useful and you like it, consider supporting me on Patreon. All of the people on the screen are doing so, and they are awesome, and they get rewards, and you can join them. So, uh, thank you for your time, and have a wonderful day.